So here we are, part two of our Nina how-to tutorial. Uh, welcome back, I hope you enjoyed the first video where we had a quick look at the navigation of how we move around Nina. If you haven't seen part one, I will put a link up the top for you so you can follow that uh, to part one. And in this video, we're gonna focus on how we connect all of our equipment to Nina so that we control our imaging session properly. I thought rather than just diving straight into Nina though, it was worth just having a quick look at how everything on my setup is connected so you can see how all the information gets back to the computer in the first place so that Nina is able to connect to it. So it needs two things, one is the power and the other part is the data. So let's see how both of those are connected to my telescope. Okay, so first things first, the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Boxing Mount is my hub for everything. So everything I need data-wise uh, from the telescope side goes back through this cable uh, and it goes back to my imaging laptop which takes all the information there. In terms of all the equipment, I have three other USB cables that are plugged into this. Uh, this top one here, if we follow that down, comes out at the ZWO uh, focuser. The one underneath it here, if we follow that round, comes around and that is for my ASI 120mm guide camera. And the final one here, uh, after being wrapped around a few times, comes all the way down and is attached to the camera. The only other data point that needs to be noted here is the proprietary cable that comes with the QHY filter wheel. So that cable goes from the filter wheel into the back of the camera. That provides both power and USB for that. And obviously that comes back up into Pegasus Astro and then onto my computer. The other side of that then is the power. So if we were to come to the other side of the power box, I have a single cable that goes in, which is this black one at the top, and that is what puts the power in. Uh, again, I've said this before, but don't get your sides confused. Uh, it has exactly the same plug on the opposite side, uh, which is a power out. Um, don't put your power in into there. It causes a, a big old meltdown. Um, next to a relevant to Nina, that's the uh, dew heater straps. And then I have three power points here. So the first one is this orange Lynx Astro cable. That is the one that powers the mount. And then I have two other power cables here. And these power the focuser. And then power joins here uh, down to the camera. So that is now everything powered in all connections through with the exception of the mount. So the only other thing I will say is I use the EQMod cable to control the mount, uh, but rather than putting another wire from here to the telescope, um, I find that has such minimal effect, I just literally leave that to hang from the mount, and then that plugs directly into the laptop over there. Um, the laptop stays outside as a general rule, and I remote connect via a different laptop so that I don't get cold. So let's just jump into Nina now and see exactly how we get those things connected. Now that we've seen how everything connects together, I am in Nina and the software is running, my telescope is turned on, and I am ready to start connecting everything to Nina itself. When you first open Nina, you automatically go into the equipment tab on the left hand side here, and then you have all your different pieces of equipment down the left hand side. Now I don't have all of those, so we'll just go through the ones I have. Um, for example, I don't have a rotator, uh, I could connect my Pegasus Astro, but I don't at the moment, and I don't have a flat panel, but the, the principle remains the same for all of these, uh, and the settings are all in the same place. So we'll just go through these sort of one at a time. So when you first go in, you are within your camera settings, and this is the screen you'll see. At the moment, obviously, there's no information. Uh, it will give, so give you all the options if you look at the drop down. So, for example, I could connect my guide cam if I wanted to. It has my ASCOM drivers that are there as well. So if I'm using my ASI 294MC Pro, uh, then that would actually be picked up in here, but I can also use the ASCOM drivers. Um, but for the sake of purpose today, the one I have connected is my QHY, uh, and I literally just hit the connect button, and it will just have a little bit of search, it'll get connected, and give us a load of information. So at the bottom here, there you go, it tells us that we are connected. And as you can see now, it has given me lots of information about my particular camera. So it's given us the, obviously the camera's idle at the moment, what camera it is, uh, the pixel size, minimum exposure and maximum exposure time, uh, the pixel sizes for it, so all this information is there. And at the bottom is where you get to amend the settings that you have. So currently I am running the camera at 56 gain and zero uh, offset. Uh, not entirely right for this camera, but it, it suits me. 
uh, and this one has four different readout modes. Um, Except I can't see the difference between three and four. It seems that four just supersedes three, but uh, I'm still trying to work that out, it being a new camera. Uh, but again, I just get to select the one that I want to use, and uh, that's, that's the settings that Nina will then apply as I am uh, imaging. On the right-hand side here, uh, we have then the cooling and temperature options. So as you see at the moment, the cooler is off. It has an X there. Uh, the cooler power of the airport is at zero percent, and it's telling me that I am at 10 degrees is my chip temperature. So if I want to put that down to minus 15, I could put the required temperature in here. I never touch the duration. Uh, I think that causes problems. Uh, I've, I've seen other comments from people that have really struggled when they put a duration in, so I, I don't worry about that at all. And you can literally just hit the cooler button. And what we will see in a second is the power just suddenly shoots up and the camera will start to cool. And we can just see on the graph down here that the, the sensor is starting to cool. So ultimately I connect that first because that means that the cooler has the time to cool down before I get to my imaging. Um, for the filter wheel, again, it's picked up my QHY seven slot filter wheel. So I can just hit connect to that. And again, it just gives me a little bit of information on what is actually there. Uh, I also get the chops, I could change filters from here. So whichever uh, filter I wanted to be on, if I wanted to go to blue, I could just change and it would cycle through and it would change to the blue filter for me. That also has the filter name so you can see what is in your filter wheel. These are amended through the settings tab. So if you go to settings and equipment, um, you have the filter wheel on the top right hand side here. So if you wanted to change the name of any of these, I could go into it and change red to brown. Uh, yeah, it's too warm. Uh, so if I just went in here and took that out, so I now have a, a brown filter apparently and that would then reflect back in here to show that you've actually changed that and I'm going to change that back before I forget I've done that. The next thing that you'll really want to get connected would be your focuser. So I have a ZWO EAF and again I am able to just load that up and again basic information about the focuser. Um, then the bit at the bottom is what allows you to manually move that. So it tells you its current position. You can give it a target position. So if you know what position you want to get to, you can just manually type that into there and then click move and it will move the focus to that position. If you're trying to, to do some fine adjustment, you do have these buttons along the bottom. And these are relative to your settings as well. So the two outer ones will move your focus either back or forward five times the number of steps that it would do in an autofocus routine and the inside one move your focus at half the amount that you would in an autofocus routine. And that it again is set by you in the settings. So if we go back to here and into the focuser, you can see my autofocus step size is 40. So that's how many steps it moves with each auto focus part of the routine. So for those inner arrows, it would now move it 20 steps. For the outer arrows, uh, that would move it 200 steps. So it's a relatively quick way of stepping through things, especially if you're trying to get that first focus on a new camera or something along those lines. But that's the setting you need to amend for that. In terms of the telescope, again, that is through my EQ mod uh, cable on the telescope. And again, I can just hit the connect button and it will connect as usual through EQ mod. Uh, it's part, so let's just unpark that for a second. Uh, and again, let's just check that that has actually connected. So my rate's up there. So if I click this, we should get some movement in the telescope. It's great when, when, when that happens as it should. Um, you also have the ability to park from within Nina. So you can just hit the park button and it will do it. And if you want a new park position, so if you change your setup for any particular reason and want to park it a different way, uh, you can set the position that it's currently in as the new park position. Again, like the other areas, you get lots of information about the mount here. Um, but also this, this bit took me a little bit of a while to find. I don't, I don't really know how I missed it. If you are looking to manually slew to coordinates that you know, so i.e. not running it through a sequence that you've preset, you just want to type it in and go, this is where you um, put those in. So you put the target coordinates that you want, hit slew, and it will take you to there. You can then uh, manually obviously go through the imaging tab and you can plate solve that location. Um, and obviously if it's out, you can then just go back to your equipment, hit slew again, and it will correct itself based on where it now knows it is. Um, it really took me a while to find those. I don't, okay, I really don't know how I missed them, but it was very frustrating for a while 
in having to um, kind of go through a, a sequence to just to try and get to where I wanted to be and I, I couldn't understand why this wasn't there. It's one of my biggest frustrations so, so don't miss that when you are uh, getting used to Nina. Uh, the guider requires PhD2 to be open so as long as you, know, you have your, all your guiding software um, as long as you have it open you can just hit OK and it will connect to it. I said I could connect my Pegasus Astro, I haven't yet, I just haven't downloaded the driver for it, so all I need to do, um, and I won't. I will do that at some point in the future. My flat panel isn't one that's compatible with Nina, mine's a basic cheap tracing pad, so I don't have a flat panel to connect. And the weather is well, I don't use it particularly often, but you know you can connect to it and it does give you some um, information. I can tell you, I can see out the window from here, I have more than 20% cloud cover, for a fact. Um, it's the middle of the day and I definitely have more than that. So that is all of your uh, equipment uh, captured. Um, I said, Nina has, goes a little bit funny with the, the temperature things for QHY cameras. So whereas ZWO does kind of a natural step up of power until it gets to the required temperature, QHY's algorithm seems to just send the power to 100% and then sort of step down as it gets closer. Um, Nina seems to get a little bit confused by that. Um, so it thinks that because the, the cooler has gone to 100% power, that it's unable to reach the target temperature that I want. And hence that little error message I got in the corner telling me that I wouldn't be able to reach temperature. As you can see, um, it, it's there or thereabouts, it's, it will keep bouncing ever so slightly like all cameras do, but we are at minus 15. So that, that's 25 degrees different to what the ambient is here. And we're at, at 75. 76% of the cooler power. So you have all of this now connected. Uh, so once you've got this, really, it's just stepping on to working out what it is you want to image. So I hope you found that video useful. You now know how to connect all of your equipment to Nina. Um, so the next thing to do is looking to make sure that we get the settings right. So what we're gonna do in the next video is, is cover the, the options tab and look at the settings that work for me and make sure that I'm getting my imaging right or what appears to be right for me and my equipment, which is always a good place to start. If it's working for someone, chances are it'll work for you too or if nothing, it gives you a starting point from which to adjust from. So we'll cover all of that in the next uh, video. Uh, until then, I wish you clear skies, and I'll see you soon.